What's going on, TGN? What's up, YouTube? We are here with another episode of Overtime presented by Tech File. And this week, we are talking about episode seven and eight of HBO's Winning Time. And maybe a little bit about how Jerry West wants to, you know, take them to the Supreme Court. But <laughs> it's all that after the intro. It's your boy T I M K I N Z V number three, aka S. Catch him, aka Mr. Give it to me. Hello, 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 hello. I'm the Eric J. Only known as the Eric J. And I'm Camille Poingard of the crew, the real life Tifa Lockhart, the girl next door, you know, holding it down for all the women who love sports. And Mr. Boy K Harris, the gentleman, the gentleman, the everyday gentleman, 24 7. Or better known as K Diddy. Take that, take that. All right. As we said, we are going to be talking about episode seven and eight of HBO's Winning Time. If you're watching on our YouTube page, the Technical File YouTube page, this will be two different parts. So episode seven will be its own video. After that's over, go ahead find episode eight video. If you listen on the TGN uh, app, you should get a full show. We're gonna take a little halftime break for some ads, and we'll come right back with episode eight. And uh, I think that's, yeah, that's everywhere we at. And if you're watching on the TGN YouTube page, it's all going to be one show like you would hear on the network. So all that being said, episode seven was titled Invisible Man, which Magic remembered only as a movie. And Kareem had to correct him, like also a book. Um, but basically in this episode, the biggest storylines are one, can Westhead handle taking over, coaching the team? Because he was looking very inept at times. You got Magic Johnson having his game back in Detroit and what life is like, you know, there having Cookie come through and him having fun with Cookie Friend. And then you have Celtics, Lakers, and all that goes into that and why Dr. Buss, you know, needs to win and this and that. We're going to break it all down. So of those major storylines there, which one do y'all want to discuss first? You know, I'm always down to get messy, so uh <laughs> magic and cookies for cookie. name was. So <laughs> 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 episode seven, you you you're seeing magic still trying to build magic enterprises. You know, he's talking to Dr. Day about his deal with Buick and his father was supposed to be there with them on that, but he wasn't. And Dr. Day was like, Hey, get it done now. So Magic just went on ahead and get it done. Cookie's sitting there watching. Remember at the end of episode six, she got the tickets. So she was having this whole first class experience of seeing what it's like to know an NBA player. And for what feels like the 50 millionth time in this series, uh, there were some groupies there to remind her, like, you know, magic be choosing. (laughs) So, (laughs) ooh, it really fell apart in episode eight. But in this episode here, the messiest part with this whole magic cookie thing is the fact that you know he's upset that cookie doesn't come to his little family christmas get together with his teammates and the family and everything and when she goes to see him he has his whole woo 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 i love you you the one (laughs) all the while cookie's friend Rhonda was in the bathroom because they just got done doing what they do doing the do (laughs) giving her magic stick (laughs) (laughs) the full court experience with uh with magic there and i was like (laughs) reminded me of a (laughs) it was a full court experience (laughs) It, it, it reminded me just of being younger and i had a lot of male friends 
I had a lot of male friends. So I heard a lot of stories about juggling and the way things were done. And to see Magic do it at that level, I was like, my God, first of all, you're Go bold. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because like, he, didn't know you know, they, he, was, he was getting something started with Cookie. Like, what if she's like, hey, you know, forget that bus. Like, you can make That's the next That's what I'm one. saying. He would have made the next one. I'm right. saying, like, the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Like How you going to go in the bathroom or not? He would have made the next one. <laughs> he made it happen. I don't know anything about those types of activities. So I don't know how anything is pulled off. It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I thought you were just uh, volunteering, Ken. Oh, uh, hey, I've been there. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> uh, one at the door, one, one, one coming in, one coming out. Yeah, very Lord. stressful, very stressful time of my life. Hey man, yeah. but grow, you grow, you know. Hey, grow. that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I uh, had a time in undergrad where I went on uh, four dates in one night. You know, hey, yeah, yeah, you was busy as shit, wasn't you? Hey, I've definitely <laughs> done that. <laughs> Thank God for roommates to help you out along the way. Busy as hell, bro. How? Hey, man. It's not the time for that story. Hey, the truth. <laughs> hey, that's why she the point guard. She was our facility. So a dog's like, ah. Let me get over here. No little passes and shit like that. It was all. It was. It was all day. I had. I had someone pay for breakfast, for lunch, for happy hour, and for dinner. It was a, it was a, yeah. <laughs> it was a day. Yeah. It was a day. Oh, so, just winking a smile real quick. <sighs> That's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but no, enough about me. What, what about magic? That's who we're talking about here. Yeah, magic. you are magic, fam. Like, yeah, exactly. You're a fucking magician, hey, I guess. Y'all, y'all the Spider-Man meme. Like, look, look at that. Like, oh, all that. Multiverse of madness around them, man. Wasn't it? She was just everywhere at one time. Hey. She magic just very... Hey, I've been there too. I had two chicks in the same party Don't at me. one time. Oh yeah, you cold. One in the front, one in the back. One, I was on the dance floor with one, then left the dance floor, went to the back, chill with her. How? Hey. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, my, my man's was floating in that joint, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Huntington was probably dancing back and forth anyway. No, man. No, like, even my guys was like, I don't know how you made it through the night, but. <laughs> I don't know how you pulled that off. Tip of the hat. I get he said a couple of <laughs> rabbits fell out that mug when I tipped it. <laughs> pulled out all the tricks. I think it goes without Literally. saying here that uh, at least most of the cast here at Tech File can can understand the difficult uh, nature of juggling. I'm young. I feel <laughs> young and uh, ready. Young, young and yeah. <laughs> young and young and risky, but. I would say what Magic was doing was a little bit more reckless, given the fact that if Cookie decided that she wanted some in that moment, he I don't know how he would have got out of that. He'd have made it happen. He would have found a way. There ain't no way, because when Rhonda walks out, then she sees her best friend in the room. It's over already. No, yeah. you get her out the room. Off the top, like, oh, let's we put a go over here. Exit. Hey, bro. Hey. It would have made it happen. <laughs> Shia would have been happen. running. Damn, no, Shia been running for a minute. Hey, listen, I'm about to get in, you know. Somewhere I need it hot. You, you gotta be hot. Some ice. You gotta, gotta be hot. Some ice. ice. <laughs> I gotta let the water warm. Mm. But no, one thing about the magic thing though that was interesting at the Christmas party I mentioned that he was waiting for Cookie to show up at that she did not. Mm-hmm. Irvin Senior and Kareem had a conversation that was really interesting to me where they're talking about mm-hmm. magic and Kareem's like, was he always this happy? And his dad is mm-hmm. like, yeah. But when a doctor smacked him, it wants to see if he would cry. It was <laughs> see if he was stop smiling. That shit had me roll out. He does it. He turned to smile. <laughs> Hilarious. But hearing the conversation about how magic seems to be like, uh, what's the right word here? Oblivious. Impervious. Yes, to the struggles of being a black man in the country. I was like, that's interesting because magic says himself like he felt it because like even in high school he got bused to the all white school and he was the one who was in charge of helping uh relations between the white and the black students but the mm-hmm. way he always handled things was with charisma with 
a smile on his face like Eric doing right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boy, that's the biggest cheese I've seen. Never mind. I mean, yeah, I, I like that is like they're really setting it up like for the magic that we know. Like, obviously, he's been that way as long as he's been a public figure, but like that was really his thing. Like, he made a black, him and Larry Bird made a black sport palatable for white people, mm-hmm. and like with Kareem as the face of the league, like that turned off white fans. You know what I mean? Like that was why they were in such, that's not the only reason why, but that's part of the reason why they were in such trouble. It's like, they didn't have somebody that could kind of, you know, be the face to white America. Like Magic Johnson was the one that kicked in the door for that. And then Jordan took it like into the stratosphere. So um, I like that they're showing that Magic is at least aware of it, like in his conversations with other people, like not necessarily with Kareem, but like I think he said it with his dad and the pilot. He said it with Cookie here. He's like, yo, I got these white people right where I want them. Like, mm-hmm. all I got to do is turn on a smile and they, you know, fall in line, basically. So, yeah, it feels comfortable. like, it's not just like he's oblivious to race relations. Like, he's very well aware. He just knows how to kind of disarm it and, and use it to his advantage. Mm-hmm. Disarm is a great word choice, uh, I think. And that plays out a little bit more in episode eight, which is, whoo, the episode was just nothing but drama. But a lot of the drama here in episode seven was around uh, Westhead. Because like I mentioned, when we kicked it off, like he just did not look like he knew how to coach. He <laughs> he on the sideline getting yelled at by uh, everybody, by Jack That's Nicholson and Spencer Haywood throwing shots at him in the media. And That's his fault. Whose fault? Coach's fault. That was what I said his fault. How you gonna I'm be sorry. a how you gonna hear some shit? Bench me. Don't tell me why you bench me. For games. For games. You looking past me at the rookie. For games. You don't even know, bro. What? And then all be and you admit later on that, yeah, I overheard him say something, so I benched him. Okay, go talk to that man, bro. Like, what? <laughs> like, that's his that fault. He started all of that. Like, he could have definitely been like, hey, I ain't, I ain't, I wasn't vibing with what you said or whatever the case may be. Whatever you felt, you you could have said something to that man. But instead, you avoided eye contact, looked around that man, and then didn't play him for games. Willingly took L's. I mean, it's not a defense at all, but, like, we do got to remember, like, coaches are people too so like you can say like you know you got to be above it all and put the team first and everything is about winning 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 but like at the end of the day that stuff like it affects you at a point too like at least he was enough like he was able to admit it eventually it's like yeah you know like i let my own shit get in the way of you know what's best for the team but Mm -hmm. like that is like a realistic portrayal like you know people often when they're not doing well in sports be like man coach hate me blah 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 and like sometimes it's just like nah fam you're not playing well but like sometimes it is just that you know you did something to the coach personally where he's like not willing to give you leeway or not willing to give you that benefit of the doubt so like i think that that's something that gets lost sometimes where it's just like well coaches they they got to be above it all and all that stuff it's like Mm -hmm. referees the same way it's like you you like Boogie Cousins always gets like hella technicals, and it's like because you've been yelling at the rest for like twelve years. Like they yeah. they're impartial, but at the same time, it's like you know, it's Boogie, sometimes right I now. can look the other way for certain stuff, but like I'm gonna see everything that you do. I'll be hogging like old boy at the uh, Minnesota game, just staring them down. <laughs> see everything. Oh, the bro. security guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seeing everything. But it's interesting. Like the show is really taking those uh, fictional liberties. At this mm-hmm. point, like we are really crossing over into this being just a drama that's using some people that we've heard of and known mm-hmm. and using some of the truth, but really taking it to be their own story because the truth of it is Westhead, when he took over, Lakers really did not miss too much of a beat. Like mm-hmm. people were talking about Jack McKinney and stuff like that, but after the Lakers started winning, who? <laughs> Pretty much, like it, it, <laughs> it became that for real, for real. And he really did go and get Pat Riley out the stands, low key. 
uh, mm -hmm. and was like, I want you to be an assistant coach. But the difference is that Chick Hearn wasn't disparaging like he was in the show in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that was that piss up for Chick. Oh, tell him to shut up. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, in like real life, away from like implementing that on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in real life, uh, Hearn was like, "Go for it, man. Good luck. Do what you do." But in the show, Chick Hearn is just kind of like a dick. So, <laughs> and like Pat Riley had been doing it for years. Like it wasn't like just he had took the job over, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, there were some problems with Westhead and players on the team. It just didn't happen at this point, you know, in his career. Like the first year there, everything was cool. Mm -hmm. But the next year is when he wanted to change the system that helped them win a championship in the first place. And the players were like, what are you on right now? This is not cool. And that's where broke. Magic got his reputation of being the coach killer. Mm. They are setting up something for uh, what I'm assuming is going to happen in this season finale. Like, I won't spoil it, but like, I think setting up Westhead as somebody that is kind of like spineless and doesn't stand up for himself and is kind of mm -hmm. bumbling and doesn't really have a speed up under him. Like, they're setting it up because, like, I think a, not necessarily a turn, but like, there's a very famous thing that happens in the finals that really, like, he will, he, the, it, if my read of like what they're setting up is correct like it'll be like he stands up for himself and has to like make a firm decision for the best for the betterment of the team but like somebody's gonna be upset about it uh all this stuff happened 40 years ago so i'm not really sure if it's a spoiler for you to say it so like what what, what <laughs> thing are i mean you, i guess uh, it's gonna spoil the show but uh right. Spencer haywood like goes on a crack binge and oh, they oh yeah we knew that <laughs> I don't know if the audience do. Like, oh, right. you know what I'm saying? Oh. So hey, if just they've just heard like, us on here, we said he got a crap. We said he had a yeah, problem. He, he hit the pipe, bro. He be, you know. He, whew, we talk about that more next episode, but yeah, yeah oh, they awesome. definitely are setting that up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and the Elgin Baylor stuff. In the show, the fact that Elgin Baylor called Pat Riley and he had the wrong room. <laughs> I was like, this nigga Bill Belichick in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> he really did, like, call and just start talking. Just start talking. Had a full what conversation, bro. What? I'm like, why is you telling this man all of that? Oh, no, this Pat. Oh, damn. Hey, well, I see you in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got enough dimes. I think it's about to run out, so I'll see you in a few. I don't got enough dimes. <laughs> it's a child somewhere that does not understand that sentence at all. Oh. What are you talking about? Shit, the crowd don't even know what a dime is at this point. <laughs> damn near. Oh, okay. <laughs> you mean Dang. you mean cash app? What are you talking about? No silver <laughs> coins, little mother. Silver coins, you know. <laughs> machine, but put them in another silver machine. Pick up the handle, and then it talks to you. It talks to you. <laughs> Man, the idea of oh. the of a payphone. <laughs> Oh. I don't know how they did it, bro. Especially for the motherfuckers using one eight hundred collect when I ain't had no dimes on me. <laughs> you have a collect call, bro. Hey, pick up the phone. Hey, pick up the phone. <laughs> no, y'all running my phone bill up. You can't. I ain't even right. answer that. Like, no, pick up the phone. I won't call you from this number. I didn't need. Um, and too young to understand this conversation. Oh man! If you called somebody collect, the person you were calling incurred the charges for said phone call. So a lot of times when people call someone collect, the person who's answering the phone is like, I'm not about to accept this call. You're not about to run my phone bill up. Bitch. I've had a baby eat some boy, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that even the concept of you got charged per phone call. Like it's wild. Shoot, we came yeah, up on that with them cell phones. Since, uh, call me after nine o'clock. Don't call yeah, me. Yeah, I remember that. that. <laughs> we could have been for a text message. Good lord, bro. I, man, we used to pay for text. Her text bro, message. T9 was the worst, bro. I don't care. Yeah. Hey, I love T9. I, love T9. I did, bro. Have it. T9 was the worst. Dude, I can wait to get it. When I got a sidekick, that changed my life, bro. Get a sidekick. Rich nigga. Like, I'm, Anywho. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not that young, but like, I'll be watching old TV shows and like, they'll meet up for dates and I'm like, like, what happens if some shit just come up last minute or like, y'all meeting in a public place, y'all just gotta like, walk around until you find a person that you're looking for? Like, yeah. yeah. My mom said Jed would literally call the bar, call the restaurant. Like, yeah. say, like, hey, can I use your phone real quick? I need to call uh, the ho their home. Like, see right. what's That's up. Wild. Like, getting stood up was a real thing back then. Because yeah, you couldn't. Pissed. You couldn't I don't check. Know what are you, I ain't heard from you in months. 
<laughs> literal months, bro. Literal. <laughs> literal months. Dude. I could I not find you. I came here every night looking for you. Flying. I came here every flying. night. <laughs> that's but that's how Magic almost got caught up. Like she just had to pop up on him. She didn't know where he was at. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is why to this day cats hate when you just pop up on. Them. <laughs> like, don't oh, you pop up on me. You never I never know, know what I'm doing up in here. Never know. Exactly. Tim used to be notorious pop. Hey, I'm, I'm in the neighborhood. Can I- <laughs> hey, but I would reach out like I'm in your neighborhood. You busy? No, hey, open the door. I'm, I'm downstairs now. Then. <laughs> I'm downstairs now, man. <laughs> That was Tim. I would be that posting was like because everybody was like in the Marquette, UWM, MSOE. They all within like oh. arms reach of everybody, and I had a vehicle rolling around the city. So I'm like, shit. Let me go on over here and grab this book. Oh shit, I'm down. I'm down on the street from there. Hey, I'm down. I'm outside. What y'all doing? Chilling. Me in it. <laughs> all you next thing you hear is buzz, buzz, buzz. <laughs> But so Tim nah, just invited himself over is what you tell me. I was visiting my friends and spreading love and joy to everybody. What you talking about? <laughs> spreading your, your Roy Oates. No, nah, just love and joy, bro. <laughs> just love and joy. If Tim was in the neighborhood, he was going to stop by. Yeah, he was going to stop by. But the episode ends with the big Celtics Lakers showdown and we understand in part as to why Dr. Buss is so like, yo, we got to win this game. I need to see something because Claire, go ahead and she's like, hey, I checked your mom's books. She made some mistakes, but she knew what she was talking about because the way that the assets work, I'm not a lawyer here. I'm going to mess all this up. But basically what he was saying, or what she was saying is that if your team performs well and you go on a nice playoff run, even a championship, your value goes up. Like you're not as deep in the woods as you think you are because the players are the ass, like are the value of the team. So if they're good, we good. Mm-hmm. Did I get that right? Yes. <laughs> that summary for the most part. Which I so thought we was actually kind of interesting on that point. I was like, go ahead. I was like, yeah. It was a couple of thoughts that came to mind, honestly. It was, the first one was like, that's very racist. Slave ownership type <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. But I was like, at the same time, it's a business and it does make a lot of fucking sense to me. Was that this episode on that? The no. next one. When no, when they were like schmoozing like the bank people, like that was the previous episode. No, that was the last one. Before, before. Yeah, yeah he was like, like yeah, we own this smile. smile. I'm like, the fuck. Yeah, when like that started to kind of like that. I'm like, he, oh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, in episode eight, the mom asked Doctor Bus like, which ones are yours? And I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, yikes! All right, <laughs> <laughs> but this episode. We get us some Larry Bird. We get us some. Uh, I do not like this nigga, bro. Dick. Like you this know. makes me hate. I never like Larry Bird, and this this reopens that. You, like make me hate Larry Bird. I was like, fuck. Why, him, why 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 is this like deepening the hate for Bird for you? Oh, just saying like how like how much of an asshole he was. Um, you know the the person. Okay, first of all, the actor that they chose, like. Fam, he looked like Larry Bird. He do look like Larry Bird, but he got a face that make you want to punch it. So, like, he don't he just like you. I was like, oh, he's like LeBron James' daddy, bro. Oh, the dude that be out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he be out there hooping. Like, he be oh, hooping in them boots. He do. But yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't like Larry. Fuck Larry Bird, yo. I mean, that's, coming from a Lakers fan, like that's expected. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's funny watching it because I mean they they Larry Bird was like that. He did not mm-hmm. like media. He did not mm-hmm. like talking to people. He really yeah. just liked being on his farm and he liked basketball. Like that's mm-hmm. about it. He was always short. He was not very charismatic. So to see him up sitting there answering the questions next to Magic and the Magic like, oh man, it's about to be a rivalry. That's like <laughs> having Tim sit next to I don't know the complete opposite of Tim. Like it, it just the complete the, opposite of Tim. <laughs> Like it, that's what it reminded me of. Just like Larry was just so different from Magic, yeah. and not even like on the racial thing, but just yeah, how they acted. It was like a, a stick in the mud, as I was saying. Yeah, yeah, even his teammates say like, "I kind of hate, it. like not hated him, like they loved him because like he was a teammate, but then, he was like, he was an asshole. Was he was like a dick to us too." So it's mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Lakers were all talking about, hey, get ready to go play in Boston because it's different in Boston. You saw how the refs Good were tripping. Fans, boy. The fans, boy. The fans were tripping. Different. For them Red to have Dr. Buster 
the the uh, the worst seats in the house there. And the worst seats. Then gave him the the decrepit vegetable. Talking about, oh, it's like your coach, a vegetable. Welcome to Boston. I, I said, my God, God. God. Yeah. motherfucker, tip the hat from the floor. I'm like, my oh, God, God. oh, Norm Nixon is hilarious distance. in this show. Or I guess Norm Nixon's son is hilarious mm-hmm. in this show. Like, it's every time he on the screen, like it's Go yeah, home. definitely, yeah, he's like, funny as hell. Which I thought yeah. was actually hilarious because the way that they describe Boston and the way they talk about Boston is how typically most black people be talking about Boston. But then people be acting like, I don't understand where y'all be coming from talking like that. Like, my guy. It's not like it's a secret that motherfuckers really didn't fuck with this. <laughs> Boston's a beautiful city, though. I ain't gonna work for it. I ain't gonna work for it. I've been there been there once. It's a beautiful city. I ain't gonna say it's for black folks, but it's a beautiful city. I like how it's set up. It's set up nice. Okay, I'm gonna take your word for it. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go to Boston. We can take a trip to Boston. I have no desire to go to Boston. Let's <laughs> trip to Boston. Let's get it. I used to go to because you like the the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, no, I used to want to go. That's the reason why I went. I went, to, I went to Fenway. Huh? I used to want to go for like clam chowder on the East Coast, but I really clam like, chowder. Like, um, I really don't. <laughs> one liberty that they did not take is somebody really did shit in Bill Russell's bed. That's a true story. True story. I believe that. That's and he played for the Bill Russell again. Like, it was so outlandish that I was like, that probably really did happen. <laughs> and you play for them, bro. Like, come on. Bro. One of them he, he some I play shit. for you. I'm like Damn the every year. I'm the reason. <laughs> and they really did try to make the the Celtics arena a hellhole for every opposing team that came through. The refs mm-hmm. were reportedly always kind of little Freaky pipes, a little different up they in said Boston. The hot water did not work in the business in the locker room. Yeah. So. Bro. That all, I mean, that all happened. The they took liberties with the score and whatnot in the game. The, the Lakers did win that, but they just wanted to up that that drama between you know Magic and Larry, and then the Celtics and the Lakers because Doctor Bus and Red had their thing a few episodes back as well. But mm-hmm. we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to be discussing episode eight.